So today I wanted to go over um, a few settings with the UV Flatten SOP that will uh, help you get some really um, predictable, very linear UVs. Uh, this, this came up from a friend of mine who was, he had sort of this racetrack geometry shape and his UVs, when he used the uh, UV Flatten, were looking much like this. Um, and what he wanted to do was just to add stripes, you know, like road stripes or patterns on, on the road. So I want to show you a really quick way to be able to flatten these out to get them to look uh, more like this. All right, and I'm also going to show a couple um, new features of this uh, this curve SOP, the the new one that's added in, um, well, it was added a few versions ago, but it's had some enhancements in 19.5, so I'm going to talk about those. Um, so I'm going to hop into a new geometry node, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to drop down a spiral, and let's make this... Just make it a little bit taller than it was. I'm going to turn on my points so I can see. I'm going to turn on my point um, display here just so I can see how dense these points are. And I'm actually going to bring that down just a bit, maybe to maybe maybe to 15. And now I'm going to drop down a a new curve stop, and I'm going to plug this curve into it. So what that'll do, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is a new feature, but what that will do is it'll give you handles to manipulate the curve um, that you're using as an input. Uh, now one thing I want to do is I want to use the new auto points. So if I just use this selection tool as part of the curve SOP, grab all the points and then click this icon here. And what that's going to do is it's going to change all of the points from uh, points with tangent handles to this new auto point and what a couple benefits of that are now I can you see if you hover your mouse over the line segments rather than the the points themselves you can actually grab these segments and move them around which is really nice and, and moving the points around is is feels really nice too you get nice feedback in the in the viewport and um, I feel like it just gives you a little bit more um, fine control over the shape of your curve so I'm not going to go too far with this. I just want to point out that one, you can feed curves into this. You don't have to just draw a curve uh, from nothing. And that once you convert these to the auto points, you can you can just have, you've got more flexibility in how you manipulate that curve. So now I'm going to drop down a sweep and I'm going to feed my curve into the first input. I don't get anything because I don't have a second input feeding in. And I'm just going to make this from a ribbon. And let's leave that as it is for now. And I'm going to drop down a Poly extrude, bring this out just a little bit, output the back. You can see this has far too many subdivisions. So on your sweep settings, you can just drag that, the column number, you can pull that way back. And the last thing I want to show, um, the last feature of this curve sock that I want to show is uh, the new orientation handle. If you click the orientation mode here, then what you can do is by shift clicking on any of the, any of the points, you get uh, these sort of curve handles and they're a little bit awkward to push like if you tried to rotate that all the way around it starts to feel a little bit awkward um, but then you can just keep shift clicking points to get more uh, to more orientation handles so if you want to add banking to these uh, these curves it's actually a really nice way to do it add just one more again I'm not really focused too much on what I'm making just as much as uh, I just want to show you the uh, the addition of these new tools um, we'll say that's good. And now what I want to do is get into the meat of this with our UV flatten SOP. As soon as you drop that down, it uh, splits your viewport in half. It gives you a UV view on one side and gives you your 3D view on the other. Uh, the first thing we need to do is cut some seams. We don't have any predefined seams. So if you look at your, uh, with your tool handle selected, you look in this top bar, it automatically uh, the first thing that it selects is this scissor icon, which is seams, and that puts you in edge selection mode. So I am just going to hold shift, uh, control, and A, and middle click. Uh, why, isn't that, why isn't that doing everything? That should be cool. Uh, there we go. Not sure why that wasn't working to begin with, but basically if you select an edge, it's going to flag that green, which is this little... Uh, this viewport icon here will show you where your seams are. Um, so it flags an edge, uh, whatever your selection is as a seam. And uh, the loop select shortcut in Houdini is if you just hold down shift and A and then middle click, uh, that will give you a, uh, a full a full like loop select, uh, edge loop. 
and give you a full edge loop for your selection. But I don't understand. There we go. It's being a little bit finicky um, to get that entire selection, but just click the edges around it and then uh, you should be good to go. And I believe that I've got all of my seams. Nope, I've got a couple down here left over. Again, just holding down A and um, middle clicking to get those loop selects, and then uh, Command or Option to deselect, remove uh, errant selections. And yep, that should be good. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to turn off this Enable Manual Layout so I can see better what we've got. All right, so I've got these really curly selections here. I also have, um, have some that are these little islands off down here by themselves. I'm not sure. Actually, I think I know what those are. Here's what I want to do. I think I had a bad selection here. So let me get rid of that. And let me fix down here. That should give me more what I want. OK, so sorry for the long uh, just making selections. But now this is very similar to the problem that we had uh, in, in sort of the test geometry that I showed you. What we want, like these are all quads. You know, if you think about this, let's say this were a road or anything else, it, it would be really nice just to add a straight line or if you're using a trim sheet, just to be able to position your UVs along um, one axis and take advantage of uh, an efficient way to add you know, straight line details. Uh, there are more tools here that you can use. Uh, you might think that you could uh, click this one and you can align edge selections in a UV direction. And, and that will get you there, but it is very tricky to do. You have to do more selections than you think you would need to, and it can just it can just lead to some issues. There's also this rectify quads, which sounds really promising. And when you hover over this, uh, and actually after you leave it, you get the little help menu down at the bottom, and it says shift click on quad blocks to rectify them, okay? So you can do that either in the 3D or in the 2D viewport. And if you just shift click that, it does exactly what you want. It adds this, um, it takes that entire UV island and just makes it uh, one, you know, linear laid out uh, UV set. And if you look over here in your um, in your parameters, when I did that, there's this rectify group, and it just lists every quad that I um, or every I think these are vertices, but it um, it looks at every it, it makes this really long selection. So rather than do that, I'm going to clear that out. Let's just say do that to everything, but put a star in the rectify group, and lo and behold. We've got all of all four of our islands um, laid out, and their longest edge is across the the U here, the U axis, um, and that's really that's the meat of it. Now, if you want to make better use of all this space, which I'm sure you're likely to want to do that, uh, you can go back to your scissor icon to cut new seams, and then you can sort of uh, take the halfway point. I'm just guessing where the halfway point is here, and you can uh, cut the cut your seams to give yourself more space and you just keep doing that if having you know if if it is okay to have a uh, a break in your um, in your texture this way this is a good way to, to to sort of maintain your aspect and also make better use of your UV space so and again you can you can add your uh, curves you can add your seams this way um, so that they line up so that like your breaks line up um, and there you go you've got much cleaner UVs, um, at least you know for for this use case, you get uh, UVs with completely straight edges, uh, rather than that. Um, you know, I can show you the other one again. Uh, I'm just going to copy my same group. Oops. So rather than have this um, this really crazy and almost unusable layout for your uh, for your geometry which is really just a twisted plane uh, you've got you can use this technique to get really planar uh, looking UVs and then you can use other UV tools the UV transforms to make better use of your uh, UV space so that's it hope you picked a little something up from this and thanks so much for watching